Okay, you guys, um, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, this, this is life now. Um, but I did still want to offer you uh, just some insight into some stuff that you can do while you're at your desk. Um, just some mobility stuff you can do, just ways to keep the body active, lubricated, healthy, as um, we spend a lot of time working from home. Um, I think I'm gonna do a bit of a series on this. So we'll do some maybe chair yoga stuff. Uh, we can do really, really good yin poses for later at night before you go to bed. Um, mobility in the mornings. Uh, but today, I just want to focus on just general mobility. Um, the reason that we get really, really stiff, uh, especially those of us that work corporate, that are sitting a lot, um, even when we are in jobs that we are standing a lot, or even if we are walking around, it's posture. If we're in the same shape all the time, our muscles just start to get stuck there. Um, so think about mobility as lotion for your body, okay? So one of the, we're gonna start from the ground up. Uh, so these are things you can do in between when you're working. You could do this in the morning to just wake your body up. Um, lots and lots of different exercises. So we're gonna start with the feet. Um, feet are a really often ignored area of the body, um, but they're really, really important. So um, we're gonna do some, cars for the feet. So it's just moving the feet in a way that um, essentially you're not moving the whole leg because what we tend to do when we're isolating or trying to isolate is we don't actually isolate the ankle itself that we end up actually moving um, the shin bones and sometimes even the femur. Okay, so I'm trying to think how I do this to cross it. Basically, you're gonna hook, so take your right knee in towards your chest, hook your left arm underneath your right leg. Okay, this gets a little complicated. Left arm is gonna wrap your right bicep, and then you're gonna hold your shin. So what this is doing, it's a little pretzely, <laughs> but what this is doing is it's actually holding your shin in place, and then you're gonna play with moving the foot. So you'll start to feel if your shin is moving around, and that's what your right hand is there for. So right hand is really, really strong. So just start by taking your right toes up towards your knees, into your knee. <laughs> and you're gonna feel the muscles on the front of that shin begin to activate. And then holding your toes up, slowly begin to trace the circle over to the left. So you're still having that flex in the foot. Now begin to point the toes towards the ground, but still circling. So you're taking a full circle into this foot. It's gonna feel sticky. This one always going to the outside. So imagine you're leaning with your pinky toe. Now you're going to the right up through center and then over to the left. Okay, so it's a flexion and extension of the foot as well as articulated rotation. Okay, so you're rotating through the joint. Should feel actually quite challenging. When I shattered my heel uh, last year, this, this was my physio. And even on my good foot, which is what I'm doing right now, uh, the range of motion actually wasn't as big as I thought. Okay, so when you come back up through center, you're just gonna take a couple of circles. So maybe take about five circles each direction. This is not something you wanna move through fast. So you're really looking to move through this slowly. And that's where you're gonna feel, you should start to feel your shin muscles really beginning to fire up. You might even feel your calf as you point through the toe. Okay, you can finish off that last circle and then just gently release the grip of your foot and we're gonna take the other side. So left knee comes in, opposite arm scoops underneath. So right arm hooks underneath your left, right hand to your left bicep and then left arm onto your shin. Okay, so think about, <laughs> this gets confusing. Right arm underneath left knee, left hand onto your shin and then you're using the grip of your hands to hold you in place. Okay, so you're just gonna take a couple of circles in this direction. So because this is the foot I broke, I actually tend to wanna skip right here to just move up because it's really sticky. Try to avoid that. Okay, so when it feels sticky, when it feels like Rice Krispies, move slower through it and try to come to that full range of motion that's available. 
So even if it feels like a lot of work, you're just gonna slowly, slowly, slowly move through it. Okay, so we're not avoiding the areas that are stuck because that's what we're looking to unstick. Okay, so you're gonna switch directions. We've done about five that way. Point into your toes and then begin to lift toes in towards your shin. Okay, let's take two more. Okay, and then when you come back up through center, you can gently release the grip of that. Okay, so this next one, now that we've worked onto the ankle, I want to work into a bit of fascia release with the feet. So you're going to tuck your toes under and then sit your hips back to your heels. Okay. Pinky toes like to be little skate artists, so you're just going to reach back behind, make sure your pinky toes are tucked. Now, for those of you that have um, just really tight knee joints or this causes pain for the knees, grab a pillow, scoop it behind your knees. You can take as much and as many pillows as you want, or you can even take pillows to sit on between your legs, but you're looking, <laughs> Penny wants to join in, you're looking for um, that opening into the bottoms of the feet. So this is not meant to be comfortable. Toe squat in yoga is actually, it's, the Sanskrit name for it is dukkha, which roughly translates as suffering. So if you're feeling a little suffering here, know you're not alone. Now, if this is just way, way, way too much, if your feet are really tight, you can always take your hands forward, take some of that weight out of the heels and into the hands, but you still want the toes tucked and you still want your hips sitting back towards the heels, even if all of your weight isn't fully on. Okay, now if you are feeling pretty good about this, you want more sensation, slide your knees even a millimeter forward and you're gonna feel a whole lot of sensation in the bottoms of the feet. Okay, biggest thing with this one, we're trying to hold because fascia doesn't release within 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Sometimes it can actually be minutes. So you're trying to hold, but keeping the rest of the body soft. So when we feel tension in one area, we tend to try to move it elsewhere. So if you're gripping with your fingertips or your shoulders are meeting your ears, just try to soften, relax into that. You can even close your eyes. Okay, we're gonna add in a little bit of breath work. So breath work is really important whether you're in <laughs> this pose or you're just a little bit stressed with whatever's happening um, throughout your day to just calm the body, calm the nervous system and give us a place to reset. So we're gonna take five um, box breaths or we call that kumbhaka. Okay, so closing to your eyes and then imagine that as you are breathing, it's like air filling an empty vessel as so the water is going into a jar. So filling all the way from the top and then feeling that lift up from the bottom to the top of your lungs and then exhaling, pressing back out, okay? So take an inhale breath for a count of one, two, three, four. Hold at the top for four, three, two, one. Exhale out one, two, three, four, soften your shoulders, and then hold in for four, three, two, one. Inhale, fill up, one, two, three, four, hold, four, three, two, one. Exhale out, one, two, three, four, and hold, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna continue, but I'm not gonna count, so inhale. Hold at the top, but soften to your shoulders and your face. And then exhale out and feel your body just sink down despite whatever you're feeling in the feet. I know we've been here for a bit. Okay, pause in emptiness. Do two more breaths. Inhale through your nose. Feel some lightness through the chest and body. Hold. Exhale out through your mouth. Let that go. Okay, you guys, we only have one more breath. Let's take another deep, giant inhale breath, belt all the way up. Hold at the top and know that you're okay despite the sensation, despite any tension, and then just drop that with your exhale. And hold. All right, this is the best part. Walk your hands forward, gently untuck your toes. Okay, they're gonna feel really, really sticky. That was a long, long, long hold. 
You can keep the pillow there if you'd like, you don't have to. And then you're just gonna gently begin to sit your hips back onto your heels. You know, some of you are gonna feel this already here. If this bothers your knees, you're gonna take the pillow or sit up onto something. If you wanna get deeper into the tops of angles, walk your hands back. You can even play with floating your knees. Just make sure that there's never any pain or tension in the knees. You should feel the sensation switching from the bottoms of your feet now to the tops. You may just lean a little bit further, maybe lift the knees higher, or you just allow yourself to simply land and breathe and not try to hold yourself up. Okay, so that should have released a little bit of tension. Now we're gonna go into some lengthening of the backs of the legs. So begin to slide your hands forward. Meet into a tabletop so that you're always stacking your bones. And this is a really good reminder, whether you're in yoga, you're doing squats, you're in any sort of you know push-up plank, stack your bones, shoulders over your wrists, hips over top of your knees. Okay, tuck your right toes under, slide your right toes back and press through the heel. So you're gonna get that length through the back of your right leg. If you don't feel this, you're looking for more, tuck your left toes, lift your hips up. It's a modification of down dog, but what you're really looking for is that release into the back of the right calf. Okay, we're not gonna hold this next one for too long, but another great way to release some of the tension, the calf. So come back down if you're in down dog, bring your right knee in. Pick up your left knee and then place your left knee into the belly of your right calf. I like to lower onto forearms because my wrists get a little bit, a uh, little bit loud, a little bit yelling at me when I'm on them for too long. Okay, and then you're just literally gonna massage out your calf with your left knee. So you need to press down. If you don't press down, you're not gonna feel this. It's gonna be similar to that last pose that it's not meant to feel great. <laughs> it's kind of a balance. There's like this, it feels really good because you can feel that you're releasing something, but it also feels like your body might spontaneously combust. <laughs> um, okay, so here, you wanna feel some tension releasing, and in order for us to actually get to that release, there's gonna be some discomfort, because it's growth, it's change, and any type of change or growth we go into tends to be uncomfortable. So we need to just find that balance where you can both be in effort and in ease. So your body can still be really soft. Okay. So now that we've kind of flushed out the calves, we'll come back to the other side. So bring your left knee down, come back up onto your hands. You know, we might have just put a lot of tension in the shoulders just from trying to hold there. So let's begin to release the spine, cat cow. So flexion and extension. If this is a lot for your wrists here, you can walk your hands one hand print forward. Why it's okay to not stack the bones here is you're not fully weight bearing. As opposed to a plank when you're here, now you're putting a lot of pressure on the shoulders. If shoulders are over wrists, your bones are stacked so it's less tension. Okay, use your inhale breath, drop your belly down, lift your gaze and tailbone up. And then as you exhale, feel the pull of your belly button to the ceiling, tuck your chin under, rounding through your shoulders. Okay, inhale breath, you're opening the front line of your body. So belly gets wide, chest broadens, collarbones, it feels like they're separating to opposite sides. And then as you exhale, contract through that front line. Feel your belly bend zip up to your spine. As you push into the earth, separate shoulders away from one another. Okay, let's take one more breath just like that. Right. And then we're gonna lengthen up the left calf. So tuck your left toes under, slide your left heel back either pressing into your hands to see if you can take your left heel further back behind you, or if you're coming modification down dog, tuck your right toes, right knee lifts, and you're drawing your left heel to the floor. Okay, the point isn't to get the left heel to the floor, it's just to feel that length in the back of your left leg, calf and Achilles especially. Okay. And you'll gently release all the way back down to tabletop if you were lifted. This time, right knee picks up into the belly of your left calf and then lower onto your hands and knees. Okay, you might be thinking right now, especially office workers, why am I doing my feet and my calves when it's my shoulders or my back that's really sore? Okay, so this is one of the things that we often forget is our body works as a whole, that we can't just focus on the shoulders and expect our bodies to feel healed. Because of the fascia of our body, what you're working through right now is you massage out your calf. It's, it comes from the theory of anatomy trains. 
that the fascia from our feet is actually attached all the way to the fascia at the top of our head. So if there are places within the fascia that are tight or tense, we need to actually release the entire line of the body. So right now you're working on the back line of the bottoms of the feet, the calves, the hamstrings. We'll make our way up the line of the spine, into the backs of the shoulders, tops of the traps, and even into the skull. Okay. So we'll gently come all the way back through to center. You can then release your right knee down. Come back up onto your hands. This time shifting side to side. So we're gonna find some lateral flexion of the spine. Take your hips over to the right. Look over your left shoulder. Okay. Inhale, breath, lift your hips back up through center. Send your hips to the left. You can even drop your left hip down so it's a bit of a twist even. If you just wanna come into lateral flexion, keep your hips in line with your head and you're just moving side to side like you're wagging your tail. You wanna add in more of a twist. You can play with dropping your hips to the ground. Okay, so just think about this as fleshing out the body. Okay, we're gonna skip for a moment to hands because we've been in tabletop for a bit. So from here, just begin to make your way onto your seat. Okay, and just roll out your hands a couple of times. Comfortable seat, so whether that's cross-legged, if you feel like your knees are up here, you can take pillows underneath or you can just take your feet out in front or even um, butterfly the legs. Okay. And then roll your wrists the other way. Okay. So a good, um, a really cool way to look at this is actually come into cross-legged if you can um, and just go in the most comfortable way. So whatever you kind of immediately go to. And then I want you to switch. So take the other foot in front so that you're crossing your ankles and just notice how sticky that feels. Okay, so this is kind of my reminder that um, how easy it is to fall into patterns or loops and that when we put our body outside of those habits or patterns that I never sit with this leg in front, it's really, really uncomfortable. So it's just kind of that reminder that we have to move in these different vectors. It can't always be, you know, push-ups. It can't always be yoga. It can't always be um, staying still because that's when we're gonna start to get sticky. All right, so to work into the hands, you're gonna take your hands to a prayer at your heart center and then flip your fingertips down and then press your hands in towards one another and draw your elbows towards the ground. So you should be feeling this into the fronts of your forearms and wrists. Okay, don't worry if your hands are down here. The higher up you bring your hands to elbow height, the more you're gonna feel this. So if this isn't available, just bring your hands further down. You wanna make sure the heels of your hands are glued together. And then you'll slowly begin to flip your fingertips back up towards the ceiling and then invert your hands. So keep your fingertips together for a moment. Peel the heels of your hands away and then begin to flip over the hands. So backs of your fingers land and then backs of your wrists. And once again, in that prayer shape. Nice, you guys. Okay. So just breathing through whatever tension is there. See if you can soften to your shoulders. I know mine like to hike up to my ears here. And then you'll just gently release that out from under. Okay, you can circle the wrists a couple more times again. Um, this is a fun one, just circling wrists and ankles. You can even do this. I mean, you know, be aware if you have a partner in the bed with you. But even just as you lie in bed, like you might just take your feet in the air, hands in the air. This is called dead bug. It's one of my favorite just to, you know, flex the hands, curl them in, point the toes, flex the feet whatever um, movement is just available to create some lubrication for the joints. Okay, so now that we're in seated, we're gonna take a little bit of movement for the spine here. So we found it in tabletop, but I find sometimes seated is, it just, it's different. Um, this is something you can do in your chair, which is really, really great. So you don't have to be seated somewhere in your house. So you can actually do this just taking breaks um, while you're, in your chair, we call this chair yoga. Um, there's so much more we can go into, but I'll show you a couple of them. Okay, so on an inhale breath, reach your fingertips all the way up, and then you can rest your arm onto the form of your chair. You might just dangle it down beside you. If you're seated on the ground, you're gonna take your left fingertips over towards the side, and then just reach through your right hand. Now, instead of holding, this is about mobility. 
So we're gonna to begin to find some opening and closing of the chest. As you exhale, think about drawing your right armpit towards your left knee, chin tucks in towards your chest. And then as you inhale, open this back up. Okay, what's really cool about doing this with the breath from a yoga perspective is that you're not only getting the mobility and movement into the body, but you're also able to calm the nervous system. So those of you that are just doing this as you work, it's kind of twofold. So that you get this opportunity to just reset the nervous system and give yourself some space to be. So with that being said, don't rush to it. If you're rushing through this like this, but you're adding in your breath, you're probably hyperventilating. So really take that full inhale breath to open up and then full exhale breath to twist. Okay. This time as you open up, take both fingers up to the ceiling and then you're gonna find the other side. So right hand drops down beside you, left fingertips over. You notice if your left hip bone is trying to lift out, you wanna root it back down. So the length isn't just through the side body, but it goes all the way into the hips. And then once again, just start to explore some movement. So it's a folding of the spine and then an opening of the spine. Remember to bring your head into this. So you're tucking your chin into chest, lengthening through the back of the neck, and then you're opening up, gaze towards the ceiling. Okay, you're just gonna take a couple more, just like that. Feel the lengthening across the front of your chest and inner line of your arm, and then notice how as you fold, that now goes across your shoulders. So those are the two lines of your body, or some of the lines, your front line, and then your back line is what you're getting as you close. Next time you come all the way back up, we'll gently take the hands all the way down. Okay, roll out your shoulders once, twice, and then move in the opposite direction. This one always feels a little bit sticky. You can start to feel mine just crackle and pop the whole way. Uh, so I probably need a few more of these. Okay, we're gonna do one more thing with seated, especially in a chair. So if you're in an office chair, um, postural tip as well. You want to make sure the knees are either knees really in line with your hips. So it's kind of that idea of stacking your bones so that your hip flexors aren't being pulled. Knees could even be a little bit lower, but you never want your knees above your hips because what's happening is you're actually contracting into the muscles that connect to your hip flexors. So they're going to get really, really, really tight. Okay. So for the head, neck, shoulders, um, if you're on a chair, you can wrap your hand underneath the bottom of the chair and then pull up, bending into the elbow so the shoulder is down. Or you can also do this in seated or in a chair where you just take your right hand underneath your bum cheek so that your hand is rooted down, which also means your shoulder is going to be rooted down. As you inhale, think about lifting from your belly button up towards the crown of your head, and you're just going to gently pour your left ear over to your left shoulder. So you should be getting some nice length through the right side of your neck into your SCM. So the muscle that connects your um, sternum, your clavicle, and your mastoid. So it's quite a big muscle running up into your head. This is going to be both, um, I believe, the lateral line of the body and the front line. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, but it's, it's a big one, and it also is really connected to where our traps are, to so many other really problem areas. You know, you can also kind of massage into this. Be really mindful you're not cranking the neck. You can begin to turn your nose down towards your armpit, and then you can play with turning your nose up to the ceiling. So it's almost like you're getting a massage for these muscles as you move. I'm just gonna take just another couple rounds of movement. You can do this, you know, 30 seconds is usually pretty good. 30 to 60 seconds, I would say. Um, but obviously if it's starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable and um, to the point where you really, really don't wanna be in it, just come out. Make sure when you do come out that your nose is facing the center, your ears over to your shoulder, and then you'll gently just begin to lift up you can lift up your right hip and then you'll just move to the other side. Okay. So left ear or right ear will pour to left shoulder, you know, like thing through the left side of your neck. I really like to close my eyes in this shape and then just begin to move through it. So you're not worried about what it looks like. You're not worried about depth. 
if you do you find somewhere that feels really, really good to stay, just pause there. So whether your chin is up or down and then focus on completely relaxing the body. So if you're struggling to relax the body, just take a really giant big breath in and almost sigh out the exhale. So like a, you can just kind of drop your body and then try to stay in that shape. Now that's not to say that when we're doing this, we're rounding curl in the spine because that's actually what we're trying not to do. So the spine is gonna stay straight, but if we stack shoulders over hips, we actually don't need to use too many muscles of the back body to hold us up. Another option, do this against a wall or when you're in your chair, make sure that your shoulders and your um, sacrum are against the chair so that you're not slumping forward and you're not leaning back. Okay, so just a couple more breaths with movement. Uh, fleshing out that last little bit okay. and then you can come all the way back up and release your hand okay roll your shoulders once or twice just to release any tension that might have lingered there I'll show you one more neck one we're not going to hold into it but something you can explore on your own um, similar idea so you're going to pour your left ear over to your left shoulder and then you pick up your right hand um, like you're pushing into a wall and just begin to straighten out the arm from the shoulder so I have to stop actually here. I can't fully straighten out my arm, um, but you feel really deep sensation through the line of the shoulder, the arm, and into the traps and the SCM. Okay, now some of you might need to drop the arm lower. This is gonna change. So the lower that you drop the arm, I find that this goes more into the SCM, less into the traps. The higher that you lift up, I start to feel it more into the deltoid and the shoulder. So you can kind of play with where you want the arm, and then you'll just pause there for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Okay. This one, when you come out of, it can feel really nice when you bring the hand, bend the elbow back in, hand onto your thigh. Take your left hand to your left cheek, so you're not contracting these muscles to lift up unilaterally. You're using your hand to actually guide your face up, so that the muscles you just stretched don't have to immediately contract. Here, we're just going to do the other side really quickly, maybe not necessarily holding for that full 30 seconds, but just starting to play with where do you need that hand to land? fully relaxing into especially this left shoulder so we're not hiking it up to the ear and close into your eyes or just whatever's comfortable and then again when you come out of this your left elbow will bend left hand back onto your thigh and then right hand picks up your cheek okay so we've done the feet um so the reason for the feet i wanted to explain this to you guys so Essentially fascia, it's almost like a spider web. Uh, I always like to think of it fish nets for the muscles. We got really sexy muscles over here. Um, <laughs> so it's like this spider web system of the body. Okay, and I'm putting on my shirt so I can kind of show you this. Basically, if you think of this shirt as your fascia, so when our fascia is really, um, really healthy, it's, gonna, it's not gonna have any tension or any pulling. So shirt is loose, it's just gently covering my body. Now imagine that one area of my body I'm not moving, so it's getting really tense. It's gonna start to ball up that fascia because it's not getting flushed out. So essentially, if this is an area that's tense, now imagine it's pulling. Now notice what's happening to the rest of my shirt. So this is why if our hips are tight, look at where it's pulling from, the shoulder. So we're not just gonna feel it in the hips if the hips are tight. We have to do the shoulders, we have to do the neck. This is why we really have to pay attention to the whole body. If we just do our neck, the problem might actually be in the low back and we have to really work our entire way up. So that's why we're kind of starting with the feet because feet are the foundation of our posture. And if you're sitting all the time, you're probably not walking around. You might not be walking for your daily um, lunch. You're not walking um, between offices. You're not doing stairs as much. So the fascia of the feet are starting to ball up and now they're pulling too. So really, really important just to move. I like to move bottom up, but you can move anyway. Just make sure you get all of the major joints. Okay, hips. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do hip circles from your tabletop. So where we were earlier, where you pick up your right knee. Now the biggest thing to remember with tabletop is, I don't know if you can see over penny, there we go, okay. When we do this, before you even start to move your legs, is you need a strong core. 
because this is an isolation, you just want your right thigh bone, the femur, circling the hip socket. So the hip socket is a ball, ball and socket. So if this is a socket, this is your femur going in, you're just rotating the femur, that the hip itself isn't moving, nothing else is shifting. So for that to happen, the core has to be really strong and then your left hip has to be really strong. Okay, so draw your belly button up towards the ceiling. You can even press into your hands, so slight lift of the shoulders. You can tuck your left toes if you want a little bit more stability and then float your right heel up. Okay, right knee begins to draw out to the side, big toe edge of the foot towards the ground. Take your right knee in towards your chest and then send your right knee back behind you and then lift through the heel, which means you're squeezing the glute. Okay, so you can take a couple rounds in that. Another thing to watch out for here, as you go through these circles, we take our right knee out to the side, we tend to take the left hip out as well. So really squeeze, feel like you're scooping that left hip into the body to keep your left hip over top of the knee. So notice how it's just my right leg that's moving. Okay. If you've done a bunch of circles on that side, just switch to the other side. Um, I'm going to talk you through the other one that you can do from standing. This one's a little bit more challenging, so you can always find something to hold on to. Right hand comes onto your right hip, and then you're going to pick up the knee to hip height. If you wanted to try this out, you're welcome to. Okay, you're going to begin to send your right knee out to the side, so like you're stepping onto the block to the right side of you. Now this is the fun part. Drop your right knee down to the ground as the pinky edge of your right heel lifts up to the ceiling. So essentially you're gonna to begin to rotate. Okay, this is where we start to notice the other hip dropping and this hip lifting. So you actually wanna keep everything else square just as you were in tabletop. Okay, and then scoop your knee behind you. Now your heel is lifting back behind you. This is great to activate the hamstrings. I have a huge sway in my low back, so I'm still working on that. So you wanna play with keeping Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> you wanna play with keeping core in, pulling your hip bones up towards your ribs. Okay, and then you're gonna draw your knee back up. Okay, pulling out to the side, drop the knee down heel. So it's just a little bit different um, articulation of the joint. Ooh, I'm gonna need to do my left side. So this one's a little bit more challenging, but also it's just a really great way to play with strengthening the hips. So it seems weird when the hips are already really tight that we're strengthening them, but we're not strengthening the big muscles. When hips are tight, it's typically the big muscles that are already um, quite strong that we're re-strengthening. Here, we're actually strengthening the little ones. So those stabilizers, those internal rotators, those external rotators, the tiny muscles that are actually quite a few layers deep of the body. Okay, so we've done feet. We've done a little bit of fascia release. We've done hips and neck and hands, and we've done a little bit of the spine. Um, so we've done some mobility. One of the big ones I wanted to introduce you to is actually shoulders. So shoulders have a lot of mobility, similar to the hips, because they're a ball and socket joint. But these ones tend to be the, hips and shoulders tend to be the ones that we really um, lose the mobility in. And for me, shoulders cause me a lot of neck pain. So one of the ways that we can do it, similar to the hips, is actually articulating through the rotation of the shoulders. So if you take your hand out in front of you, palm faces in towards the body and thumb points up. So then you're just gonna begin to draw your hand up towards the ceiling until your bicep comes beside your ear. When we're going through shoulder rotation, so making sure that we're not using anything else, take your left hand onto your belly and onto your rib cage, okay? So as I do this, you wanna make sure you're not flaring out the ribs to take the shoulder back, that your belly button is drawing into your spine and it's actually just the rotation of the shoulder. Okay, then flip your palm to face out like you're waiting for a high five, okay, and then slowly begin to draw your fingertips back behind you. Now ideally, your arm would stay in one long line, but notice how when I started to do this, I rotated the rib cage. That means I'm not actually rotating through the shoulder, I'm rotating through the spine. So that's okay if as you do this, your arm has to go further out to the side. Okay, you're reaching back behind you. Okay, then once you come back, to point it back behind you, you're gonna flip your thumb down towards the ground, and you're gonna to begin to scoop your hand all the way down beside you and lift up. 
So you're just gonna play with a couple of these. Palm faces out when you come up. Once you reach back behind you, you begin to turn the thumb down, palm facing in. So you're just working into the shoulders without twisting the body. Um, we see this a lot, and you can add this into yoga classes when you're in lunges of adding in this opening of the shoulders, but just making sure that you're really opening. It's the humerus, the upper arm bone, moving the shoulder socket and not the entire rib cage moving. Okay, so you can try that with the other arm. Um, again, take your right hand onto your belly. The biggest one you're gonna notice is that you rotate when you're trying to reach back. So try not to rotate the spine at all. Keep your, your heart forward and then just reach back even if that's more out to an angle. Okay, the nice thing with this is you're lengthening the inner line of the arm. Okay, you're beginning to reach all the way to the fingertips, so the entire line of fascia of the arm. And then you're getting the outer edge, you're getting some rotation on the shoulders. Okay, this one's actually quite tough. And then I would say also move in both directions. So you can play with your thumb back behind you, lifting up and over. It gets a little bit confusing when you've done it a bit, but just, you know, just rotate through the shoulder. Biggest thing, create shoulder rolls. Another really great way shoulder rolls is hands onto your shoulders and just draw the biggest circles you can with your elbows. So elbows drawn together, they lift up, they spread wide and back. Okay, so that can also be um, just a nice, mobility for the shoulders. Okay, we've done lots of mobility. Um, let's do just a little bit of things that you can do when you're in your seat. Um, so when you're sitting down, one of my favorites is actually figure four. So you can imagine this, this is my office. <laughs> um, you're gonna pick up your right knee and cross your right ankle over your left thigh. So your right foot is flexed, right toes are pointing up to the shin. Um, left foot is firmly planted. Another um, total sidebar, but those of you that have short legs like me, if your knees are quite far below your hips, it somewhat pulls onto the hip flexors if your feet aren't firmly planted. So it's gonna feel like a lot of strain. So taking um, pillows, books, blocks, anything so your feet can be firmly planted. Okay, let's come back to figure four. So you're here. This might be enough, just allowing gravity to gently draw your knee to the ground. You're gonna feel this into your right hip. Biggest thing with this, make sure your foot is flexed, okay? So that you're supporting the knee. When the foot is flexed, it's engaging into the muscles of the front line, which means the knee can't really move side to side. When it's relaxed, the knee is a little bit more susceptible to injury. Okay, you can stay here. I actually really like to fold. So you can take your forearms onto your thighs. Just make sure you're not pushing on the knee itself. You can drape your body into a fold here. And what that's gonna get you into is those big muscles of the glutes that you just worked. Um, I just did a lot of work into the stabilization. It's probably where you felt a little bit of that fire or heat building. So this one's really good. Um, I'd say hold the stretch anywhere from about 30 seconds to 60 seconds. That's really all that muscles need. Um, half a minute to a minute. So if you're wondering what that is, the box breath that we did, where it was a count of four in, um, holding for four, count of four out, and holding for four, think of it this way. That's 16 seconds. Take four box breaths. That's it. That's a minute. Um, if you don't like the box breath, take eight breaths that are a count of four in and a count of four out. Okay. So you'll slowly come back up and you can release the foot down and find the other side. Just kind of balancing that one out. Figure four can be done in so many ways in yoga. So if you want to make this a little bit more fun, you can do a standing figure four, which is a little bit more balanced. We see this on the ground as well on your back, where you're either in figure four with foot down or foot is lifted for thread the needle and hands interlaced to the hamstring. Um, you might see figure four twist. This is probably my favorite. So know that it's not just, this isn't the only way you can find it, but I find this one's nice just when you're stuck at your desk, say, in a meeting and you want to open up. Okay, so you gently release. This next one is my favorite for spine and low back. So I'm actually really flexible in the hamstrings. When I fold, I don't feel it in the back. I don't really feel that release. But being in a chair it takes out the lengthening of the hamstrings and it's fully the spine. So you're going to take your feet out wide, turn your toes out to the side, and you're just gonna to begin to hinge forward. So arms can rest onto your thighs, or you can just drape the body. 
Okay, so the weight of gravity is drawing your head down. So you want your entire body to be, well, you want your entire upper body to be relaxed. So that you're not tensing any of those muscles. It's almost like your upper body is dripping to the ground. If in the chair doesn't work for you, on the ground can be nice. So feet again wide, toes might be slightly turned out just to give you more room. And then you're just draping. Why I would say the floor is a good option is if folding over your chair tenses into your neck or it doesn't feel good for the neck, especially if you've had neck issues, a block or just, you know, Jenga tower your way so that your forehead has something to rest on. And when you're doing that, you just wanna make sure your chin is tucked in towards your chest. And then the biggest thing with these poses is you wanna be relaxed. Okay, well, we know how to relax, we breathe. So not breathing really tight, but really being mindful, count the breath is great. Um, especially if you're newer to breath work, counting the breath just keeps you a little bit more accountable. It gets you into a rhythm. And over time, you'll just start to relax. So usually by the end of that minute, you'll find that the body is a little bit softer and it takes time. Sometimes just going through the body to be like, where am I feeling that? Okay, can I soften into that place? Yeah, okay, next place I feel intention. Take your attention there and see if you can soften. Um, we'll go through uh, one more for the chair. I find quads get really, really tight when I sit a lot because we're contracting to bring the knee up. Um, and I have short legs and sometimes I forget to put my feet on things. So the quads get really, really tight to hold you here. If you have no idea what I'm saying, stand up and do this, okay? And just hold it and notice what muscle is tight. You might even poke it to feel it. Notice what muscles are not tight, which muscles are um, loose. So just to start to become aware of like what's, what you're working and what you're not. Quads can be really nice on a chair or if you have a coffee table to just pick up one foot and even take the top of your foot onto it You'll want to walk to walk your other foot further away and then you just bend into your standing leg and draw your right knee to the ground. So it's a little bit, I think I can show you here. Um, so it's a lengthening of that front line. Okay. But instead of having your hip really push forward, take your hand. So one hand is on your belly, one hand is on your low back. And as you drop the knee down, it's like your hands are now going to be parallel. So instead of Sorry, not parallel, I guess they're parallel anyways. Instead of feeling that tip forward, that your fingertips point to the ground and heels of your hands point up. If you wanna make this a little bit more effort, but still get that lengthening, in a lunge pose, if you're practicing yoga, instead of having that back leg straight, bend the knee to a hover. And if you take your hands onto your hip bones and then your SI joints, those two bones at the base of your spine, okay, you'll notice how your SI joints are pointing back behind you rather than down, feel your hip bones pull up towards your ribs. So it's almost like you're squishing this space, okay? And that's what's gonna happen when you bend your knee, which means you're getting into the quads rather than the hip flexor. So you really wanna lengthen the quads out. It's gonna be a little bit of strengthening, so it's more active lengthening, but it's still gonna do a pretty good trick of this. Also, if you wanted to come into a lunge, but a more lengthening one, just dropping your knee and sending your right hip forward. There's also a really beautiful bind um, where you pick up your back toes and then opposite hand reaches back. So left hand for your right toes. So lots of ways. I think the chair one, um, that one to me is just pretty simple and bending into your side and like dropping the knee, but know that there's all those other ways that I also offered you for quads, as well as just straight up standing, picking up the heel hand onto the top of your foot. Okay, so we've worked through quite a few of the really, um, just kind of the biggest areas I want to get to. I feel like I could talk about this for ages. Um, let's just talk about really, really quick uh, what it is to work from home and how we can stay, um, just how we can stay healthy and not even just body healthy, but mind healthy. So one of the biggest things I've noticed with my boys that I'm living with, um, they, they take their food to their desk with them. So they go into the kitchen, they make something, and then they eat at their desk. 
I think it's really important that we start to separate work and life. So if you're carving out the time to make a coffee, if you're carving out the time to, you know, make a meal, sit down and enjoy it. Um, it's gonna, first of all, it's gonna lower your, uh, the stress of your body because you're just actually taking the time to enjoy food. Um, you can actually breathe, you can kind of detach from wherever your mind was getting stuck. You can also come into a different posture. Um, you're moving around a little bit more. Um, and you're just taking time for yourself so that you're not fully immersed in work every minute. Because really, for most of you, when you're at the office, you are leaving for lunch, you are walking floors, you're taking the elevator. So making sure you're still doing that at home. Um, I would say you set a, set a timer on your phone. Every hour, get up and move. Um, and you can be in meetings. You can be in meetings and sitting on the floor, you know? I mean, obviously, maybe not uh, video meetings. That would be a little weird. But if you're just on phone calls or whatever, you know, that maybe you can do this. Your notes are in front of you or whatever. But that you can still move through this. Uh, same goes for water. Making sure you're drinking enough water. That's something I really struggle with. Um, my husband has a water app, so he has tried to get me to put it on my phone, which I guess I should probably do now that I'm lecturing you guys about water. Uh, so yeah, water's really important. Um, just taking some time to breathe. So in the morning when you pour yourself a coffee, instead of rushing to work to drink your coffee while you work, you know, take five minutes. Um, close your eyes, wrap your arms around, arms, and <laughs> wrap your hands around the coffee cup and just feel the heat of the coffee. Maybe take a deep, giant inhale breath in and let the aroma of the coffee, you know, seep into your body. And then just kind of let that go as you breathe out. Take a moment to soften into your shoulders. Um, really taking the time to enjoy the coffee. So just taking a couple sips and maybe it's just closing your eyes and letting yourself in stillness. I think just taking that five minutes to set up your day is gonna make a major difference rather than always trying to multitask with everything. Um, I know I did say, you know, you can do some of this stuff while you're still working, which I think it's still more important to move the body, even if it means we're multitasking a bit, but take those breaks too. Take a coffee break. You deserve 15 minutes, slot it out that you're not free, and go for a walk. Take a coffee break, take a lunch break. Super, super, super important. And um, I guess finally, uh, one of the biggest things is to also take time to unwind. So if your day was really stressful, we know uh, from tons of studies that we hold stress in the body. So our fight or flight mode, our fear or stress response, it's the same in our brain. So the brain waves that we go into when we, you know, see a lion, or I guess we don't see lions here, you see a bear, <laughs> um, say on a hike, you immediately tense up, you get ready to either run or to fight. The same thing happens with uh, emotional stress and mental stress. So if there's a tight deadline, if you feel like maybe you made a mistake, if you're feeling not good enough, all of those start to put us in the same brain waves and the same stress response. So we're gonna do this. The difference is we don't take time to decompress when we come out of that. So even if you know the situation gets resolved, you're still probably sitting at your desk like this. So it's really important at night after work, um, mobilize the body so you're just starting Imagine that stress is something just sitting here and as you move through it, it's like you're warming up the stress and you're melting it away. So coming back to some of these mobilizing exercises, this is where yoga I find really important because it's a full body mobilization and then lengthening. Um, and then I love yin. I think yin is one of the most important things that we can do when we're stressed. And um, there's so, so many people right now that are offering online platforms. There's so many studios in the city that are offering them um, and for super, super cheap. So know that you can do that. I just wanted to show you my two favorite Ian poses before we close off today. Okay, so one of them is supported fish. If you have yoga blocks, this is great. If you don't, you can still use um, blankets, pillows. Basically what you're doing is you're opening your chest. So for all of you that are really rounded and you feel tight through the shoulders, probably because the chest is tight. So you want to open this up. So think about the front line of your body as being opposite of the back. 
So when we're hinging forward, we're contracting into the chest and it pulls our shoulders forward, which means all of these muscles are constantly being pulled at. And so it's a lot of work. They get exhausted and they get sore. So if we can start to open the chest, it brings us back into that upright posture and then we can just relax into these muscles. Okay. And to open up the chest, we don't really want to come into this really deep opening for 15 seconds and then leave it because we'll usually snap back. The idea with Yin is we completely relax the body. We use props to hold us up. So it's almost like you've taken an elastic band and you've just wrapped it around a jar and then left it there overnight. That elastic band is gonna be a lot looser in the morning than say an elastic band that you stretch for five seconds to its max and then let it go. It's just gonna go back to where it is. So think of your muscles like that. Okay, you want to lift the heart. So if you are doing blocks, medium level, high level, and you slowly lower yourself so that the block lands across the shoulder blades and then the second block lands to the base of, or the back of the head and you want to make sure the blocks are flat on the ground and on your body so that your blocks aren't tipped like this because then they'll fall out and that's trust me not a nice experience okay arms come out wide so notice how that line from my fingertips of my right hand to my left hand is now getting this really juicy opening across the chest okay so you can just stay here relax into the arms if you're looking for this with pillows try to find a bit of a firmer pillow um, I have a bolster, and then if you do have a firmer pillow, you can stack some books on the far, far end, so it's kind of like a ramp. This can also be couch cushions, and you bring your lower back up towards it, and then you just drape over top. If this is a lot for your low back, just walk yourself a little bit further away and plant your feet. Okay, and you're just looking for an opening of the chest. And you'll stay here, set a timer for about three or five minutes. I do suggest setting the timer because if you just think that you're in it for three minutes, you're probably only in it for 30 seconds. <laughs> um, that's how yin kind of tends to be. Our minds wander, and it's really hard to be still for a set period of time, so set the timer. Um, yeah, and then my other one is for the hips. So shoulders and hips um, are really the biggest ones for me. So deer pose is my other favorite. And deer pose, so if you're sit sitting with your feet planted, shift over to your left hip, almost like you're a mermaid, your feet are your tail and you're drawing them back behind you. Okay. And then you're gonna to continue to take your top leg back and then come back up so your shoulders are over your hips. So in this pose, your legs are like a pinwheel. Um, they're about 90 degree bends, but know that you can always have one knee in a little closer or your back knee a little further. It's really similar to pigeon if you practice yoga, but it's gonna give you that internal rotation of the back hip, which we don't get in pigeon and it's really, really important. So dear, you can stay upright. You can lean forward. Leaning forward is gonna get you into your left glute. So similar to that figure four stretch. What I like about deer is there's lots of ways to go through this. So you could spend a couple minutes leaning forward and then you can actually walk in. This is probably my favorite variation of deer. Lean over to the opposite side of your back leg. So my right knee is back. So I'm gonna lean at about a 45 degree angle from my front leg or a 180 degree angle from my right knee. Okay, so I'm just leaning into that hand. You might lower onto your elbow. Essentially, I have a long line from my right knee all the way towards my right shoulder. And then you can play if you wanna open that right shoulder up or you wanna turn more to the ground. If you're looking for the lengthening into the quads, that's what this one's gonna get, a bit of the hip flexors, squeeze your right glute. So it's like if your hip is rolling back, you're now rolling your hip forward. As you contract into the back line, you're gonna open up the front. Okay, so those are a couple that you can play with. Um, and those ones, yeah, hold three to five minutes. I, uh, those are ones that I like to just do at night. Um, and then low back, actually, I was gonna say one more for low back. Taking pillows, either underneath your knees as you're lying on your back can be nice. I actually really like, if you pick up your hips, and you take a pillow underneath your low back, pull your hip bones towards your bottom two ribs, feet are planted. So there's some contraction in the core, but that means you're gonna lengthen the spine. So this can be really nice, or you can even take your knees into your chest and just curl up into a tight ball and notice how my low back is now slightly rounded, but I'm not having to use any muscles to do this. If you actually flip this pose upside down, it's really similar to a child's pose. 
And this is where you can take your feet up, you can draw your feet over, so lots of different variations, but you're just looking for a really, really gentle opening in the low back. And that one too, you'll hold for about three to five minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna close this off because I know this is um, a little bit of time, but I'm gonna post a few more of these. Um, we'll go through just like rolling up the muscles, fascia release, um, different poses, really just kind of workshopping what we can do. Maybe some more chair yoga for those of you that are in your desk, can't leave your desk, but really need to move. So biggest reminders, um, move as much as you can throughout the day. Get up every hour and move. Uh, one final one, you can go between a door. So imagine the edges of the door here, take your forearms onto the door and then walk through. That's gonna be a more active chest opener. Hold that for 30 seconds even that's gonna help a little bit throughout the day. So it's gonna give you that mobility. Um, yeah, drink water, remember to breathe, and I hope that this helped somewhat. And you can always message me if you have other areas that you really wanna work into or other areas um, that you want to explore further or any questions. Okay, you guys, thanks so much, and enjoy the rest of your day.